Please join with me responsively. We are called to welcome the children. We are called to welcome the stranger. We are called to welcome our neighbor. We are called to welcome our enemy. We are called to welcome God's presence, to welcome Christ in our midst, and to make space for the Spirit. Good morning. And welcome to St. Peter's United Church of Christ virtual worship on this Sunday on which we celebrate the anniversary of the United Church of Christ. Please join me responsively further in our call to worship. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget us forever? How long will you hide your face from us? How long must we hold counsels in our souls and have sorrow in our hearts all day long? Consider and answer us, O Lord our God. Give light to our eyes. But we trusted in your steadfast love. Our hearts shall rejoice in your salvation. We will sing to the Lord, because God has dealt bountifully with us. Let us pray together. Faithful God, your love stands firm from generation to generation. Your mercy is always abundant. Give us open and understanding hearts that having heard your word, we may seek Christ's presence in all whom we meet. Amen. And now hear these words from the sixth chapter, the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we, too, might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And from the 10th chapter, of the Gospel according to Matthew. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. 
And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Here end our scripture readings for this day. In addition to the current pandemic, we've been dealing with a different minor crisis over at the Emanuel Parsonage this late spring and summer. Emanuel, both the church and the parsonage, use a well for the water supply. Because this well provides for the church as well as our home, its water gets tested on an annual basis. Now, if you've ever had a well and had to deal with water testing, you may know it can become quite a pain. Now, up until this year, we haven't had a problem. But this year, there were bacteria found in the water and cycles of flushing it out with bleach and chlorine have been in process. And although the water used by the church has been cleansed now for a short while, we just received word this week that the water at the parsonage is likely safe. As a result, up until now, we've been going through lots of jugs of water, not to mention the bottles, which I disdain due to the use of plastic. This predicament has lasted almost two months. Have you ever had to go without access to fully functional plumbing for that long? Like I said, it's been only a minor problem, but such a situation does serve as a reminder of how much we take clean water for granted. Appropriately, Jesus mentions water this morning as he teaches about welcoming. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones... Now, that may seem like a routine description of hospitality, sharing a cup of water. But there's an important adjective here we shouldn't let slip through the cracks, much like those very dry bones in Ezekiel's vision of the valley. It's not just a cup of water here. It's a cup of cold water. Now, when I want cold water, I can just grab a bottle from my fridge. But this type of refrigeration was many centuries in the future when Jesus gave these instructions to his disciples. And it also shouldn't be missed that they didn't exactly have our kind of faucets 
and the desert regions of the Middle East in the first century either. It's not that they didn't have water or even cold water. Maybe they had some, but they had to access it, perhaps from a well without bacteria. But it took some effort to locate a source of cold water. It wasn't an everyday convenience. In other words, the kind of welcome Jesus' disciples are called to offer goes deeper than the surface and takes some work. We are called to take on responsibility to meet the very real needs of others. In fact, that's what Christian discipleship is all about. Caring for others is the whole point. We're more tempted to think the church exists to meet our needs. Maybe we don't like to be reminded that Christ asks us to do things, that God has expectations of us. It's possible that we've gotten tired of hearing about loving our neighbors, and neither do we want to hear how much the Bible has to say about what our roles should be in confronting injustice. There's no question. There are churches like that out there. There are churches that tell people only what they want to hear, that God wants them to be rich or successful, and since he died for us, Jesus doesn't call us to follow him in sacrificing for others, for the oppressed or imprisoned or impoverished or persecuted. Yes, there are churches out there that perpetuate the falsehood that Christian faith is all about yourself. Luckily, congregations affiliated with the United Church of Christ are not part of that kind of church. That's something to acknowledge on this UCC Anniversary Sunday. Luckily, we're part of a Christian tradition with a long history of seeing the direct connection between discipleship and taking part in racial justice. From publicly condemning slavery as early as 1700 to being the first to ordain an African-American pastor in 1785, to working for the release of the Amistad captives, to taking a leading role in plunging the country into a civil war to end slavery, to taking part in the founding and leadership of the NAACP, to calling one of our own, the Dodger who integrated Major League Baseball, to active participation in the civil rights movement in the 1960s and beyond. Luckily, our church has eyes to see that an officer's knee on a black man's neck for nine minutes isn't an isolated incident. Luckily, our church understands that the ability to breathe is as a very real need as a cup of cold water. Luckily, our church can proclaim fully that black lives matter and knows that discipleship means we take action accordingly in solidarity. There's no ignoring this truth. Your church tradition teaches that working for racial justice comes as part of Christian discipleship. And this tradition we now call the United Church of Christ has been teaching so for at least 320 years. 
that's not going to stop anytime soon. Our other reading also touches on the use of water. When the Apostle Paul writes, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That is the purpose of baptism into Christian discipleship, a baptism with water and spirit. Luckily, we have been granted such a gift of transformation. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join with me in reciting the statement of faith of the United Church of Christ. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. As we continue to be reminded of God's love and its calling, of the power of the Spirit and our mission, let us know that because love remains at the very center of God's character, we are always welcome to come before our Creator and share all in our hearts and minds. We are always welcome to come before God and share everything that's happening in our lives, in our households, in our community, and in our world. And so, with that in mind, let us pray. O 
oh God, eternal spirit. You have called us into relationship to fulfill a mission whose meaning we yet dimly see. Grant to both St. Peter's and to the wider United Church of Christ a secure sense of our identity as people of rich human lineage, as children of the promise, as nobodies unless you claim us as your own. And make us impatient with any identity that does not propel us into the struggle for justice, liberation, and peace. Distribute among us gifts of faith and prayer, of prophecy and discernment, of love and hope that we may never cease doing your will as followers of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we conclude worship this morning, I do have one important announcement. I want to let folks know that a return to church team has begun meeting, and they are making plans and procedures for a safer return to church. So those plans are underway. Please stay on the lookout for more information, including a possible future date for return physically to the sanctuary. now. The grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows. Amen.